Yo, what's good everyone? Welcome back to another video. Sorry if I sound sick because I'm still getting over a cold, but I just could not wait any longer to make this video. Sony came out with the A7R4 a few months ago. So yeah, I know, I'm pretty late to the game. It would be awesome for Sony to hook us up. Maybe one day. But until then, I have to save up and buy it just like everyone else. I finally got it in the mail and this video will feature the unboxing experience as well as some of the new features of the A7R4. I will also be comparing it to third generation bodies because I've owned every generation of the A7 since the very first one. So I'm pretty familiar with how they handle and how they work. As you're watching this video, let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to answer them in the comments below. I try to respond to everyone because I just love having these kind of discussions with you guys. Anyway, I'm super excited to use this A7R4. So let's just get right to the unboxing. Most of it is black and features an image of the camera on the top and the front with an orange accent side. The bottom has some legal copy and all of the camera features are splattered across the back. Opening the box up, you first get some paperwork on the left like warranty info and quick start guide. On the right, there is a USB A to C cable as well as a cable protector. Diving into the main compartment, you can see the Sony A7R4 neck strap at the top. This seems to be the same one that came with the last generation of cameras. I would have liked to see a new neck strap with a bit more padding. Under the right flap, you have the Sony battery charger, which is nice to see in the box. And then of course, you get the camera itself under the middle flap. Just initial impressions from holding this camera in the hand, it already feels much more substantial than the third generation bodies, but we'll take a closer look later in this video. Under the second level of flaps, you get the AC plug for the battery charger, as well as the Sony Type-C battery. I'm happy they kept the Z batteries because now I can use all the batteries that I already have. At the very bottom of the box, there's the hot shoe cover, which is strange because usually it comes pre-installed on the camera. Alright, so that's it for the unboxing. Now let's take a closer look at the Sony A7R4. It's really hard to convey on video, but holding this camera in the hand, you can really feel the quality of the build and craftsmanship. Sony claims that the magnesium alloy frame has improved weather sealing for dust and moisture resistance, but we'll have to see how that holds up over time. My A7 III has been fine so far, but improved weather sealing is always a plus. Taking off the body cap reveals this glorious 61 megapixel full frame sensor. I believe this is the highest megapixel full frame camera available to buy today. I'm gonna save all the tech specs for my full review, but this new sensor should be pretty amazing. Holding the camera in one hand reveals just how much different the redesigned grip is. This new grip is deeper and more angular, so it feels less fatiguing to hold. Ergonomically, it just feels much more improved compared to last generation bodies, and I'm sure it will help when you're shooting with larger and heavier lenses. On the back, there are subtle changes like the shape and the size of some of the buttons. All of them are very nicely dampened and nothing feels loose or shaky. The same feel applies to the dials at the top with really smooth action and improved tactile feel. I love the locking mechanism on the exposure comp dial and how it can spin freely with the press of a button. This is different from the lock on the mode dial, which requires you to hold it down in order to change the modes. The dial on the front of the grip is still there and it feels a bit stiffer than before. These will probably loosen up with time, but I will report back after using it for a bit. The right hand side houses the new SD card door with a push mechanism. The seals are strong and require some effort to open, which is nice to see. Opening it reveals dual UHS-2 card slots, which is simply amazing for burst and buffer speeds. The battery door at the bottom appears to be the same as last gen with the spring-loaded mechanism. Now moving on to the left hand side, you can see that all the covers for the ports are redesigned. No longer do you have to deal with the covers flapping around on the previous gen bodies. The top section has your mic, headphone, and HDMI ports, while the bottom has your USB-C 3.2 port and multi-port. I am so happy to see they included USB-C 3.2 on here. Lastly, you have the flash sync port on the left side. As well. This is unfortunate since I know a lot of people would have loved a fully articulating screen. 
maybe Sony will deliver in the next generation. Overall, the first impressions of this camera are pretty good. Compared with the last gen bodies like the A7R3 and A7 III, the physical upgrades on this camera are very welcome. These cameras are already so advanced that smaller iterative upgrades may not seem like much. But for someone who uses these cameras every day, even the smallest thing like changing the size of a button can make a big difference. So I can't wait to go out and shoot with the A7R4 and just see what this sensor is capable of. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see about the A7R4 because it's definitely going to be my main camera for the next few months. After I use this camera more, I'm going to be putting out a full review video as well as a few behind the scenes photography walks. So if that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe so you don't miss them when they come out. And if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace.